And so I'm going to have a few propositions for the evening. The first one is that art thinking allows us to expand our notions of space and time. Um, and art thinking is a methodology by which artists develop their work. And it's a methodology I've researched and, and developed. Um, and so just to state the case that this is my methodology, I think it applies to a lot of other artists. And I'm going to propose that um, it's a valid methodology for creating artwork and one that artists use. But first of all, I want to talk about design thinking, which is where this came out of. So design thinking is, uh, enter the popular lexicon. Um, it's this five-step process that was really pioneered in, uh, by the D School here at Stanford. And, and uh, the first step is this empathize step. And that's one where you're learning about the audience for which you're developing the design work. So it kind of makes sense. It's a user-centered approach. And the second step is defining the problem. And so what you're doing is um, figuring out what your users might want and then sort of bounding the scope of the problem in the first two steps. And that's the, the first two steps of the design thinking process. Now, the art thinking uh, methodology has a different sort of five-step process that I developed. And I do want to acknowledge some of the various thinkers that I've been reading and researching over the years to get to this point. And this is uh, Amy Whitaker. She's uh, written about her version of art thinking. And, but she's written about some really interesting ideas about having studio time um, and about uh, failure modes that I think have been uh, really influential for me. Also, John Maeda, who is a luminary and, and designer and thinker uh, who has amazing ideas. And one of my favorite is this quote, um, which he says, when people say, I don't get art, that means art is working. Right? <laughs> art, art is supposed to be confusing. You're supposed to go into a gallery or a museum and kind of wonder, like, what is you're seeing? It's supposed to ask you questions and make you wonder why you're there, uh, make you feel uneasy, not provide easy answers. And this isn't to say that the writing about art isn't problematic because the writing about art is often terrible. Like, we've all walked into museum spaces, not understood what the text is about. But to go into a, an art space and see something that is, is confusing is the norm. And so this is the five-step art thinking diagram that um, I've been working on. And so it goes through, the first step here is an inquiry step. And this starts with some sort of observation, some sort of question, maybe an experiment with the material, just some sort of point of curiosity. Right. And, um, and, and so this is, a, for me, I have an idea book, and all my, all my ideas go into that idea book. Anything that's kind of a valid inquiry will go in there. So it's some really bad stuff, and really good stuff, and really mediocre stuff. I'd like to say my art idea book was something like this, um, but it's actually just an Evernote document. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to share with you three, three of my bad art ideas. Um, you're welcome to, to borrow any of them. Um, so bad idea number one is to bury 3D printed fake fossils. <laughs> for, for future generations, so unicorn skulls, um, <laughs> fake animals. Uh, I'm not going to do this. Anyone else wants to do it? You, can, you don't even have to credit me. Um, bad idea number two, RGB war. It's, a, it's, it's an iPhone, Android app. Um, so you choose a team, red, green, or blue, and repeatedly press that color and get people to tap and take over territory. And so not only is it a bad idea, it's like a socially useless idea. Just a waste of time. Bad idea number three is egasm. Um, so you wear an EEG headset and record people's <laughs> orgasms, and you sort of create like a sort of pleasure signature for each person and some sort of data visualization. Um, I thought this would be, well, we'll just let it go with that. <laughs> and so the next, the next stage after this inquiry stage is, is kind of boosting some of these ideas out of the idea book into the experimentation stage. And this is the, the, the most fun part of any project um, or any sort of artwork. It doesn't really exist as a project at this point. You're just kind of fucking around and just throwing stuff at the wall, seeing what happens. Uh, for Tweets in Space, this meant building these janky little receivers and an Arduino and sending the messages back and forth and kind of thinking about protocols and messaging systems and just using our imaginations and having fun with the project. Um, the next, the third phase is the shaping phase. And this is where you're sort of bringing all the different pieces and parts into a cohesive kind of whole. And this is where the project really becomes like, like a form that you can work with. And for Tweets in Space, this was where we realized that um, we needed a messaging system, but also some sort of media strategy at the same time that really was two arms of the same project. And up to that point, we hadn't thought about the media that much. And we thought, oh my gosh, it's a tactical media project, of course. Like, we need publicity to make this, art, this project work. And the fourth stage is refinement. And to distinguish that from shaping it, 
It's like imagine you have this like sort of blob of an artistic project that's a cohesive whole. Refining it, you're just smoothing out the edges. Um, you're conceptually tightening it up. And if you don't go through this refinement stage, you end up with this artwork that doesn't quite work in a gallery space. For, so for Tweets in Space, what that meant is that we were um, going through and thinking about how to write the text, developing the press list, like coming up with uh, talking to physicists and figuring out the exact parameters of the messaging system, and, and really kind of making it into a cohesive whole. And the last phase is the showing the artwork phase. Uh, and this is an important phase, because if you don't show the artwork, you never come into a space where you get critical feedback. Um, and it's that critical feedback that really completes the work, making yourself feel vulnerable, actually thinking about the display elements. And this is the final part where you're thinking about how it's going to be presented. And, and what that showing phase lets you do is it also lets you come back to your point of inquiry. Right? So after you show it, you get more questions. And you can come back and develop the work further and make more work. And so this art thinking model, nowhere in there are we really thinking about, except for slightly at the very end, but we're not really thinking about these bounded approaches that you just have in design thinking. They're open-ended approaches. Um, you start with inquiry and experiment, and then you sort of shape this form. Um, but it starts with this open-ended approach, an unbounded approach. And this is how artists approach uh, their artwork, in my experience. Mm -hmm.